Two weeks into practice, what's the uh, common theme that you're seeing out there that's a positive and, and what are you, you feel like kind of a priority for you uh, getting going a little bit more at this stage? Yeah, I, I'd say probably the first thing that probably jumps out to me, it's been, it's been very competitive. Um, there's been years in the past where the offense would dominate or the defense would dominate, um, and it really shouldn't be that way. You know, it should be in the competitive periods. It should come down to a point or two every single time. It's been pretty competitive. Today was the first day we did uh, uh, three down, uh, odd spacing, what we call odd spacing, so odd front. Um, and I thought the defense did a really good job from a, um, from a blitz and pressure perspective. Um, and it's obviously the first day offensively, you know, for run game rules and pass game. So, um, you know, I'd like for that to have been a little bit cleaner today. But overall, I've been, I've been very impressed with the competitiveness. I think the young guys have, have adjusted pretty well uh, for the most part. But it's going to start it's starting to pile up on them right now a little bit. Um, but that's probably the biggest things that jump out to me. I think you know, some of the positions we came into the spring, um, you know, having some concerns about was it safety. The Garrett Taylor looks like a vet right now. Um, you know, we talked about Garrett Taylor and Cam Brown. Uh, you see their maturity. You know, they, you see them understanding how to practice and championship habits, which we talk about all the time. I think Lamont Wade's had had a had a really nice camp so far. He really has. Um, so I think that's helped. Um, I think at the defensive tackle position, Shelton has really grown. Um, you see him taking a lot of the stuff that he's done in the weight room and really starting to transfer it to the field. Um, and then I think, you know, um, you know, the other guy's Cole Pepper. Cole Pepper's starting to show some flashes that looks like, you know, he may be able to factor in. That's obviously not mentioned in Windsor and, and, and PJ Mustafer and some other guys. So that was a position, you know, that we had we had some question marks about, obviously. Uh, and then at receiver, we're young. We're talented, but but we still got we still got a lot of development you know, to go in that position. When you mentioned these players, out, James, who's standing out kind of at receiver, and how important is this spring for KJ? He's a young guy, but I'm assuming you have to look to him as kind of a leader of that group as yeah, well. Yeah, in a lot of ways, and he's and obviously you know he's got an outgoing personality and um, you know you know fairly aggressive personality, so that that's happening. Um, he's he's very confident, so that helps as well. You know, I think Jahan Dotson, obviously, he's played a lot of football and there's a lot of confidence that's come from that, but we need him to take another step. Um, I think the, you know, the Daniel Georges and uh, Justin Shorters of the world, again, they got to play a little bit last year, but not enough. So really their maturity from now until, until um, you know, camp is, is going to be really important with the quarterbacks, with film, uh, with one-on-ones, with footwork, with strength, with all of it. Um, is going to be important, and then I think a guy that's kind of you know really had a nice spring so far is Chasinic. Well, Chasinic can really run, uh, as we know. We recruited him, um, you know, won the hundred meter in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, the track team ended up recruiting him away from us. We lost him for a year or two, and then we were able to get him back. So um, he's had he's had a really nice spring. He's he's big, he's strong, he's fast, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna need that. When you see the spring, do, does technique jump out at you first, or just the size and the strength of the guys coming out of the weight room when you see him on the field? What kind of jumps out at you? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's more guys that you really see that have that have taken steps. You you see, you know, um, obviously the guys from year one to year two, you see a big change in those. But I'd also see it's really dramatic in in the older in the older guys. You know, guys like GT and and, and guys like Cam Brown that really have been around and played a lot of football and understand what it takes on and off the field, meetings, leadership. Um, and it's probably magnified because we're young. You know, it's probably magnified with those guys standing out standing out for us right now. But I think that's probably the biggest thing that jumps out. The, obviously, you see some changes in some guys from what they did in the off season, you know, in the weight room. Uh, but um, you know, I wouldn't say that's the thing that actually jumps have, out. Have you changed your approach at all? Like, you know, best practices, taking things, or, or has your springs pretty much been the same as as you've been here? How you've approached it? They, they've been pretty much the same. We, we've uh, you know added some some more situational stuff. Um, you know, I don't think you can ever do it enough of that. So we try to end each practice with some type of situation. Today was four minute. Um, you know, try to do something like that every single day, whether it's two minute, whether it's four minute, whether it's backed up, whatever it may be, uh, over time. You know, those types of things, and talk about how we're going to handle it and all the things that factor into it. So, um, I think that's always important, but it's obviously magnified. You know, when when you're young and experienced. James, how do you think Jared Parker has settled in, and how do you think the receivers, especially the young guys that you mentioned, how have they taken to his coaching in the past couple of weeks? Good. You know, he's aggressive. He is confident. Um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily a believer that you have to play the position to necessarily coach it, but obviously there's value there. You know, he played 
um, in the SEC. You know, he's coached a position you know pretty much his entire career, um, and there's there's a lot of value that comes from that. You know, he's been around good people um, in terms of staffs that he's been around. Obviously, with Coach Cutcliffe, I have a lot of respect for at Duke, uh, and then obviously as a player and the guys he played for at Kentucky. So, um, you know, I think the transition's been really good. I think he fits really well with our staff. Um, and obviously his relationship with Coach Sider helps with that transition as well. So I think good. I think the players um, are excited about what they're learning. Um, and I think, I think uh, he's got an aggressive personality, which I like, and how he coaches the guys. Um, and I think he's got a lot of confidence that's going to come from that. Coach, Jay, have you talked about being young a lot this, so far this spring. Uh, when do you go about thinking about defining roles for guys? Is that something that happens in the spring, or is that something you see the spring and then over the summer you start thinking about that, where they might fit offensively or defensively? Yeah, I think it's 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 happening all the time. It's happening now in spring. It happens over the summer. It happens obviously during camp. Um, how you're looking at guys, how they're going to fit, what's their role going to be, um, and then obviously there's going to be a few guys that are going to surprise you. There's going to be some guys that make significant steps between now and camp after their meetings with their players and got with their, excuse me with their coaches and gotten really good feedback. Uh, for myself and their position coaches on what they need to improve on. There's going to be a couple you know, of the freshmen show up that, that surprise us, that are more ready to play than, than maybe we anticipated. Um, but yeah, I think, I think all those things are going to be discussed and outlined and, and detailed um, you know, so that we give, we give ourselves the best chance come to camp to, to have you know, some experience and have some depth. Um, and make sure that we're getting the talented guys, you know, some opportunities to get on the field. Jesse, what do you need to see to, to kind of make this spring a success? And, and by that too, I mean, you know, you need to see one or two positions be settled at the end of the spring. What does success mean in your eyes here? Yeah, I, I think some of the stuff that I talked about in the, in the opening spring press conference about some of the positions that we need to solidify, um, you know, D-tackle safety, I think that would help us obviously going into the summer feeling like we got a better picture of what that's going to look like in the fall. I think obviously at the, at the receiver position, having a better idea of how that's going to look um, in the fall. And then I think like us, like, like a lot of programs in the country, um, you know, we're going we're gonna, to you know, maybe add a few guys between now and then from a transfer perspective. Wide receiver um, is something that, that we got our eyes open and looking around for, um, you know, and, and, and you know, possibly on the offensive line as well. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's something that could change our picture here, um, you know, between now and camp as well. How do you define if a guy has been used enough or not enough in terms of you want to get him X number of snaps? How do you kind of figure out what that equation is? You're talking about during the spring or you're talking about during the fall? Or just in general, when you, probably more the fall than the spring. Yeah, I, I think obviously you, you got to go into it based on what you've seen in camp and, and what you've seen, um, you know, in the practices. And then obviously in games and, and um, who are your most productive players? Um, who, are your, who are your guys that can be game changers, you know, that, that can sign significantly impact the game? Um, and then you gotta, you gotta look at a couple things. How many reps are they getting? Are they getting enough reps to give them a chance to impact the game? And I think every position is kind of different in how you're gonna do that. And then I think the other thing I think is important on the offensive side of the ball is touches. You know, um, how many touches does a Saquon Barkley get? How many touches does a Miles you know, get? How many touches does KJ get? Um, you know, those types of things. Um, you know, a lot of times um, you can have a really good football team and, and you got enough depth that that doesn't really factor in. Sometimes when you got a young football team while you're waiting for some guys to kind of take the next step, then you need to feed your playmakers and lean on them a little bit more than normal. Uh, but you hope that balances out as the year goes on. Um, but yeah, I think there's a couple different ways you're going to do it. Obviously, you always want to make sure that your best players are on the field, but you better be developing those other guys as well to keep those guys healthy and also create some depth as the season goes on. Um, and then that's the same thing with the playmakers. You, you better be charting to make sure those guys are getting enough touches. And it's not just on offense. It's also, you know, on special teams and all the different ways you can get the ball, the ball in their hands. Hey, James, you guys had a TV out there on one of the lists. What do you accomplish or hope to accomplish with that? Yeah, it's a, it's a technology that a lot of people um, across the country are using um, that, you know, they have purchased and have, um, you know, in their indoor facility um, permanently on the wall and then a mobile one like that so you can use it when you go inside or outside. There's a lot of different ways you can use it. So you can use it, uh, most people use it as a replay system. 
So literally that board is showing the previous play. So guys are able to kind of check that out and kind of get some ideas as well as the coaches. And then obviously you can use it, say you're, you, you've used that during a team period and now you go to special teams, the quarterbacks could go over during that special teams period and go through the previous team period and make some of those corrections right away. Uh, but I think the biggest, biggest way is for replay. Uh, and then obviously there's a lot of different ways that it, that it can be used. You know, so it's, it's a technology we've had at practice before to check out. Um, you know, um, and you know, we're looking to possibly be able to get one in here that's permanent uh, that we could use as well as the other teams. But then I think the mobile one you know, is, is useful as well. Gene, Time for two you, more. At the start of spring, you said that the defense would emphasize uh, generating turnovers. How do you think that's gone midway through spring practice? Now? Pretty good. We track that every single day. So every single day we put up in the team meeting turnovers did the offense reach their goal which is no turnovers per practice did the defense reach their, their goal which is three turnovers or more per practice same with games um, so we put that up every single day in our in our team meeting and then we do the same thing with explosive plays did the offense meet their goal of explosive plays and the defense meet their goal um, because those two things are going to have a huge factor um, I think it's been it's been about what it's been in the past, uh, not this practice, but last practice. The defense was able to get their hands on a lot of balls and, and create some, some turnovers through fumbles as well as uh, interceptions. So that was, that was a positive. But I think it's probably about where it's been uh, because we always emphasize it. I think the one thing we're probably emphasizing a little bit more defensively is, is stripping the ball out more in practice, which is good for both sides which is good for our offense, for ball security. It's good for our defense, obviously, to make sure they're, they're going after the ball. You don't have a chance to get the ball unless you go after it. James, how, did, how uh, long did it take John Reed to get back to his pre-injury form, and how did that injury manifest itself when he was first coming back? Yeah, I think, you know, I think we've talked about this before. I mean, obviously, you have the physical aspect that the doctors are going to decide you know, when they're able to come back from, and, and the players got a part in that as well, too. Um, but then I think you also have, you know, the aspect of the, the confidence, you know, um, of going out and playing, and both those things take time to work through. It's the physical aspect and, and, it, and it's the mental aspect of it, um, that they can come out here and change direction and fly around and stick their foot in the ground and, um, you know, and, and be physical in the run game and, and contest balls, you know, in, in, in close quarters and things like that. That takes time. Um, so, um, you know, in terms of giving you an exact timeline of when that, that happened, I, I probably would have been able to answer that probably better during the season. But to look back now and tell you exactly when that happened, I'm not sure. But I know he's in a great place right now.